proof of NASA's lies came with examination of the many supposed moon rocks given to museums the world over by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Shortly after Apollo 11, private investigator Paul Jacobs reported asking the U.S. Department of Geology head whether he had examined the moon rocks and if he could verify their authenticity, to which the geologist simply laughed and insinuated that people high in the U.S. government knew all about the cover-up. More recently, in 2009, curators at Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum investigated their moon rock personally given to them by Armstrong and Aldrin in 1969, only to find that it was actually just a worthless piece of petrified wood from Earth. Computer enhancements done on images of the Earth taken from the moon reveal clear photo trickery. By gradually removing the hues comprising black from the backgrounds, a bright rectangular artifact appears around the Earth, proving it to be a composite image. For example, Apollo 11 6642, when manipulated in Photoshop, shows a distinct separation line where the Earth was added into the image. Another example is Apollo 17 image AS 17 134 2471, which when enhanced and edited shows an unmistakable rectangular artifact around the Earth proving it to be another doctored composite photograph. Another interesting video anomaly is discovered by playing NASA's Apollo footage at double speed, then watching the astronauts walking, running, jumping, or cruising around in their little dune buggy. Without the speed adjustment, there is a quote-unquote low-gravity illusion, as the astronauts seem to float, drift, and glide slowly and smoothly along. But once they are seen at two times speed, it becomes clear that they are in quote-unquote normal gravity, walking, running, jumping, and cruising at normal speeds. NASA simply reduced the play speed by 50% in post-production to achieve the desired effect. 15. Another glaring mistake is that none of NASA's images or videos show stars in the background as they should, just complete blackness, likely because exact star maps as they should appear from the moon would be nearly impossible to fake accurately. The testimony of different astronauts on different missions in their autobiographies and interviews just muddies the waters even more, some of them bragging about the quote, astonishingly brilliant light of the stars, and others saying that they quote, don't remember seeing a single star while on the moon. Such inconsistent testimony, and the fact that none of NASA's moon pictures feature any stars anywhere in their appropriate positions, is yet more strong evidence of studio fakery. 16. Any sovereign-minded, critically thinking adult that honestly examines NASA image AS 11 40 59 22, of the Apollo 11 lunar lander supposedly on the moon will see a pathetic 1969 attempt at creating high-tech looking equipment using flimsy construction paper, gold foil, scotch tape, and metal shower rods. The idea that the piece of junk shown in this official NASA photograph flew to the moon and back is so ludicrous it's laughable. Most unbiased viewers would assume your average high school art class could construct this contraption without much struggle. But official NASA spokesman and astronaut Don Pettit assures us that actually this 1969 technology is so advanced that even with their multi-billion dollar yearly budget, they cannot for the life of them recreate it now. I'd go back to the moon in a nanosecond, Don informs us, but NASA destroyed that technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. Apollo 11 mission controller Harold Loden was quoted saying, the skin on the crew cabin was very thin, and that was all done because of weight saving. If you really took your finger and poked hard at it, you could poke right through the outer skin of the spacecraft. It was about the thickness of two layers of aluminum foil. Project manager Thomas Kelly concurred, noting that the skin, the aluminum alloy skin of the crew compartment, was about 12 one thousandths of an inch thick, equivalent to about three layers of Reynolds wrap that you would use in the kitchen. And Apollo astronaut Jim Lovell said, whenever I saw a model of the lunar module, it had these rigid sides and really looked strong. Turns out that external portions of the lunar module are actually made up of mylar and cellophane, and it's put together with scotch tape and staples. We had to have pads on the floor, because if you dropped a screwdriver, it would go through the floor. 17. Apollo 11 image AS 11 40 59 26 shows a close-up of the foot pads of the lunar lander without a speck of dust on them and without a burn print or crater under its 10,000 pound thrusters as if the limb was just gently set down in place by an overhead crane. NASA scientists in their own documents were worried about the lander falling into its own massive burn radius, yet there it sits, with no burn print and spotless clean pads. 
Even the astronauts' boot prints made deep impressions in the ground, but somehow the lander's thrust of 2,500 newtons left not a trace, no blast hole, and no dust on the pads. 18. During the Apollo 11 mission, Richard Nixon made a historic phone call from Washington, D.C. to Neil Armstrong on the moon, showing both men live on split-screen TV. AT&T Archives states that the call, quote, went from the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. to Houston, where it was routed into space via mission control through the capsule communicator. Even with today's far superior telecommunications technology, and at far shorter distances, there is a necessary delay, at least a few seconds in both directions. Yet, when Nixon and Armstrong spoke, there was no discernible delay. All of the hard data, the telemetry data, 14,000 reels is missing. No one can find it. What the telemetry data that is, amazing? that's the binary that data, amazing? the ones and the zeros that show the distance between the command module and the Earth during every step of the way on the way to the moon and back, which you can't fake. They don't have that. They can't find it, which you would think would be in a locked golden vault the Smithsonian. But Dang, we can't what? keep anything quiet in this country. It doesn't matter. No one's keeping it quiet. Everybody you can go NASA, look at it. The astronauts. I mean, Those guys are afraid of their lives. Gus Grisham, the pilot who was the guy who died on the launch pad along with two of his friends, he was a public critic of NASA. He put a lemon, he hung it on the simulator, put a lemon and put it on a hanger and hung it. He was dead in that same that same cockpit. He died like two weeks later. They, he burned to death inside of that. He were, they were terrified. There's no way people went on the moon. There's no way. By the it's way, it's impossible today.